Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We're built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha Conquer Outdoors. If someone was to ask me to name a company in this industry that I think has been on the gas the past few seasons, I bet they'd be pretty surprised to hear me say Argo. A change in leadership a few seasons ago has seen a new direction and new focus on quality, performance, and innovation. But it would be completely forgivable if you hadn't even noticed. The Argo itself is a pretty difficult vehicle to make look new. It's probably the best example of form following function that I can think of. But while the form will likely always remain fairly similar to what it has always been, a long list of improvements and new technology has drastically changed how the vehicle functions and opened up a world of new possibilities for both work and play. Argo invited a select group of media to their 2019 dealer show and new model intro, and we all came away with a reignited excitement for Argo. This is mostly due to their new flagship model, the Aurora. Of course, there are improvements across the entire lineup, some very minor, others more substantial. But at the end of the day, all of those improvements are to the old platform. The Aurora is an all new Argo, so that's what we're gonna focus on here. So what's different? Well, first off, the overall direction and intended use of the Aurora is different than other Argo models. Yes, Argos are fun, and they have always been fun to just ride for the fun of it. But the reality is Argos have always been thought of as more for the hunter or wilderness explorer than for the average recreational rider. Part of this is due to how Argo promotes and markets their products, but the truth is, the majority of it is simply due to how the Argo rides and handles. In a nutshell, it's just not very good. The introduction of beadlock wheels that allowed for lower tire pressures made a big difference in ride quality, but the handling was still an issue, and this is where the Aurora is really changing the game. Argo's new APS, or Argo Progressive Steering System, is the result of a partnership with very well-known and highly respected brake manufacturer, Hayes. The system is actually quite simple in that it involves only a new set of Hayes calipers and master cylinders on the transmission and a progressive spring actuation system on the steering post. To put it in simple terms, when you turn the bars, you're not pushing directly on the brake master cylinder as you would have been in the past. Instead, you're pushing on a spring, which itself pushes on the master cylinder. This spring provides a consistently lighter, more linearly progressive amount of pressure on the master cylinder and therefore more smoothly modulates the braking on the transmission. The result is an Argo that turns like any typical side-by-side, -side, in a smooth arc instead of a segmented corner of abrupt turns. At any speed, APS makes the Argo more pleasant to drive, but it's not until you get the vehicle moving faster that you really begin to see how this system makes for a more recreationally focused vehicle. An Argo Aurora with APS can be driven really fast and you can still have complete confidence in how it's gonna handle. The Aurora is so much more than just the new APS system though. Another massive change in this model versus the other Argo units relates to driver comfort and ergonomics. And there's more than a few changes going on here, but here's a rundown of the most important ones. For starters, you now sit on the left side of the vehicle like any other side-by-side. The front seat has been moved back and sits taller on top of a new completely flat floor. The rear seat now faces forward as well. The left-hand switch gear is easier to access and use and features a starting gear push button starting system. A finger throttle on the right side of the bars seems at first like a minor change, but after considerable seat time becomes one of those, why didn't they do this sooner improvements? A new gauge cluster looks great and offers a myriad of information just like any other high performance side-by-side -side or ATV. The gear shifter has been moved off the floor up to the dash where it's in easy reach. In a nutshell, the driver and passenger experience inside the new Argo Aurora is completely new and worlds more comfortable than before. To set the Aurora apart from the rest of the Argo lineup though, the body has been completely restyled. It features a new, more aggressive look with dual projector beam headlights and modular body panels that are easier to replace if a repair is ever needed. Finally, the last big change to Argo's new 2019 Aurora is under the hood. An available 950 series fan-cooled EFI V-Twin produces 40 horsepower and can push the Aurora to speeds exceeding 40 miles an hour. 
There's lots more new and exciting goodness hiding inside the Aurora. We simply just don't have enough time to go over it all here. But the important thing for you to take away as an off-road enthusiast is this. Argo is no longer content to build the same vehicles with minor improvements year after year. They've made it very clear. The future of Argo includes a heavy helping of straight up amphibious fun. The Aurora is just the first step towards much larger goals. And after spending time with the engineers and bigwigs from Argo, as well as spending considerable time behind the bars of the Aurora, I can say with complete confidence, it's a good one. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. A couple weeks back, I really shook down the new 2019 Grizzly 700 SE, and I gotta say, it's the best Grizzly that I've ever got my paws on. And so I wanted to take the time to see what I could do with genuine factory integrated Yamaha accessories to take the Mud Grizzly even further with more confidence. And by further, all I really mean is going deeper into the mud. While the stock Grizzly is an absolute beast, there's a couple of key accessories that are gonna help you out huge if you're going out to churn some mud. And keep in mind, Yamaha genuine parts and accessories are not built after the fact. Yamaha ensures each part is built in conjunction with the design of every new vehicle so you're sure of fitment, functionality, and durability. These parts are world-class and don't require strange mounting options or tweaking of any kind. Now, right up front, you're gonna have to put a winch on any ATV that you're taking into the mud. Because let's face it, we're gonna get ourselves into situations that we can't even contemplate how we'll get out of. And the Yamaha Pro Vantage 2,500 pound winch by Warren is the one to get the job done. With a lifetime mechanical warranty, a fully sealed design, and an all metal gear housing with a beefy free spool clutch handle, this is the winch that's a pleasure to use. And with the muddy focus of the Grizzly, you're gonna find yourself in some sticky situations or be the guy to help your buddies who aren't riding a 2019 SE to get out. Now on top of the winch, we opted for the heavy duty brush guard. Not only does it add an aggressive stylish front end look, but it's gonna help keep this beautiful front plastic and LED headlights from getting beat up and leaves easy access for our winch with extra protection for it as well. It's made of steel and uses the factory mounting locations, so it's a cinch to install. And when we're out slinging the mud, it's nice to keep just a little bit off of us if we can, and these Yamaha extended fenders are gonna do just that. Custom formed and designed to mimic the good looks in factory lines, but with added protection. They're made of TPO plastic that's durable and able to take a beating, and they go on quickly and easily with a seamless finish. And while staying a bit cleaner is good, protection from the unknown lurking below the mud is something really important. Yamaha has always built incredibly high quality aluminum skid plates. Up front, we're protecting the A-arms with easy to install lightweight guards that feature drain holes so you don't have water buildup against a steel A-arm. Likewise, we have the rear A-arm guards to match and give me the confidence to drive further into the mud with more speed. And should I contact an unforeseen rock, stump, or log, I know I'm adding the protection I need to the vulnerable parts. And speaking of driving faster and going further, that's enough with the install. Let's take this thing out and see what this ultimate mud grizzly can really do. Well, if I didn't have those over fenders, you can be sure that I'd be dirtier than I am right now, if that's possible. I know A-arm guards don't mean you can't damage stuff, but it truly gives me way more confidence going in that if I hit something, it's gonna be all right. And likewise, if I spear a buried stick, it's not gonna take out my axle or boots. The front brush guard is pretty much covered in mud, but it's doing its job keeping the front end from taking the brunt of the abuse when I plow into the deep stuff. And while I may not wanna dig down to the winch, it's there, and when I need it, it's able to do precisely what it's built to do. The 50-foot spool of steel cable is enough to get me out, and the 2,500-pound capacity pulls like a tractor. And when it comes to me and my Grizzly, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be the guy who's gonna make it to the other side and still be able to get back home. Now, as for my washing machine, after the mud that we just went through, I'm not sure if it's gonna fare so well. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap. 
Start strapped, stay strapped. Late last season, we had the opportunity to test out the new Ranger 1000 before it came to dealers. This all new from the ground up utility focused side by side is by far the best, most thoughtfully engineered Ranger ever made and is truly an absolute delight to drive, work, or play. But at the end of the day, this new generation Ranger is bigger, more capable, and ultimately going to take you further into places you didn't think possible with greater ease. However, sometimes along those journeys, you get yourself stuck worse than you could have imagined. And for this, we need a new generation winch as well. This mammoth beast right here is the Polaris Pro HD 6,000 pound winch with rapid recovery. It's pre-wired directly from the factory and it installs in under 30 minutes. I've installed a lot of winches. This one by far is the easiest. Even the contactor is pre-wired. So all you need to do is bolt the mount plate to the frame, bolt on your auto stop Haas, and then run the positive and negative battery cables to the corresponding posts. Seriously, that's the install. Quick, simple, and easy for the average handy person to do in no time. Well, okay, it takes time, but in 30 minutes, you should be buttoned up and ready to winch you or your buddies out of just about anything that you find yourself stuck in. And speaking of getting out of just about anything, this thing is a monstrous winch. I mean, we used to all think that a 4,500 pound winch was a big one. This makes that look like a toy at 6,000 pound capacity with a 1.6 horsepower motor. And just so you don't think it's some imagined number or that it'll only do this a few times, Polaris tested this winch and made it pull the full 6,000 pound limit over 1,200 times. So you know it's in for the long haul. Some of the cool features of this winch are the wireless remote that lets you get out of the cab and run the winch from up to 50 feet away with a coated remote that won't interfere with other Pro HD winches. Add to this the auto stop Haas that's able to sense the winch bumper making contact and stop the winching before you bind your cable or carve up your Haas with the hook. Now I'm not saving the best for last because all the features that I've talked about truly make this Pro HD 6K winch an amazing product but the rapid recovery is the one that's the really big news. It's new to market, and it's sure to become a must-have for everyone out there. And rapid recovery? Well, it's just that, a system to rapidly recover your winch cable into the spool so you don't have to stand around while your winch slowly, agonizingly creeps back onto the spool. The rapid recovery system will return the cable to the spool at five times the standard speed through the use of a high range gear system that's actuated with the same dial you use to put the winch in free spool. If the winch is submerged, you're gonna need to learn the positions, but for us here above the water line, it's easy to see the three indicators with H for high range and rapid recovery, L for low range pulling, and N for free spool. This new system is by far the best upgrade the common winch has seen. Well, since synthetic rope, and it saves you a lot of time, especially when the 50 feet of synthetic rope is all the way out. You can spend a lot of time standing around waiting if you don't have a rapid recovery. And likewise, get a lot more done and be on your way quicker and use significantly less battery power recovering your cable. It's not just a little bit better, it's truly the next best thing. With the winch market offering you so many brands, but yet so few unique options, the Polaris Rapid Recovery Pro HD 4,500 and 6,000 pound winches are new to the market and offer you time-saving advantages that are easy to install, super powerful, and will get you back out on the trail or back to work much quicker than the competition. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. Sometimes, when life catches up with you, when the stresses of the day have piled up and the weight of the world is pushing you down, you just need a little therapy. Therapy you can only get when you're behind the wheel, all alone inside your helmet, looking out through your goggles as the world flies by. It's throttle therapy, and it's here we find the inherent problem with today's side-by-side -side vehicles. The problem is built right into their name, side-by-side, -side, two people sitting shoulder to shoulder. Throttle therapy is a very personal thing, and it just doesn't work when you have to share the ride with someone else. And this is where the RS1 bursts into the industry and saves the day. As AJ so cleverly labeled this type of vehicle, the RS1 is a side by self. It's just you and 110 horsepower. And that's what throttle therapy is all about. 
And to get it done right, Polaris designed the RS1 to be ultra capable and ultra fun in every possible way. A ProStar 999cc parallel twin that produces 110 horsepower. Double A-arms produce 21 inches of two inch Walker needle piggyback damp front end travel. A three link trailing arm rear end produces another 21 inches of 2.5 inch Walker needle piggyback damp travel. And they're 64 inches separating a massive set of 29 inch Maxxis Bighorn tires wrapped around 14 inch aluminum wheels. If you think this sounds serious, you're absolutely right. I will freely admit that before I rode the RS1, I was impressed by its specs, but didn't really expect much from the vehicle as a whole. A smaller, slightly lighter Razor is what I was expecting. But boy, was I wrong. After considerable time behind the wheel of the RS1 in a wide variety of conditions, I can now say with confidence, this is the most fun I've ever had with a seatbelt on. Why? Well, for starters, this vehicle feels so much smaller than just a one-seat Razor. The narrow body makes the wheels feel like they're so much further apart than 64 inches, and this optical illusion alone gives you added confidence to push harder and faster in the corners. But the stability isn't an illusion. The more centralized mass of the smaller RS1 chassis setup keeps the whole vehicle flatter, even at eyelid-peeling speeds down the fastest, smoothest fire roads. I've never gone this fast on the top secret dirt tracks fire road test section, not even in vehicles with 60 more horsepower. This stability transfers directly over to the trail as well, but here another factor comes into play and that's wheel visibility. Being able to see the front wheels means I can more precisely place the vehicle in tighter places with more confidence than ever before. And thanks to that 21 inches of travel, those awesome Walker piggybacks, and these incredible 29 inch Maxxis Bighorns, even the rockiest, rutted up, rooted out, gnarly trail can be blasted pretty much full throttle, and the driver barely feels a thing. Without question though, the area where the RS1 surprised me the most was in the rocks. Seriously, the RS1 is nearly unstoppable in even really big, gnarly rock gardens and on steep ledges. The combination of a narrow vehicle body, those wide A-arms, an unobstructed view of those massive tires, and a low center of gravity make climbing, descending, and crawling effortless. Okay, so enough of the gushing review, right? Let's get into the nitty gritty and go over the things I don't like about the RS1. Fair warning though, there aren't many. First, rearward sight lines are pretty much non-existent. Seriously, it's next to impossible to see behind you. An easy solution to this would be to add Polaris's awesome ride command system with a backup camera. To me, this is a borderline necessity. Next, the shift lever. With all the thought that's gone into this cockpit, including that truly genius double brake pedal, why on earth didn't someone just add a slight bend in the shift lever so your fingers don't get pinched between it and the side plastic if you grip the shifter the wrong way? Next up is a big one, and oddly enough, it's also something we like most. The way the sides of the RS1 are shaped with this great big cutout, this is what gives you those awesome unobstructed views of your tires. And we love that but it's also what allows almost offensive amounts of mud to fly directly at your face if you even slightly turn the wheels in the sticky stuff. I'm sure there's a solution here, and it's desperately needed. That's it. That's all I've found not to like about the RS1. But before we end things here, I'd like to do a couple interesting comparisons that help put this vehicle in perspective just a little bit better. The RS1 has the same engine, same drivetrain, same suspension setup with the same shocks and the same travel numbers as the XP1000. It has a seven inch shorter wheelbase and is lighter by 108 pounds. It also costs $3,700 less than the XP1000. That means you're paying 3,700 bucks for an extra seat and some extra storage space. Now, if you're the kind of side-by-side -side rider who does take a passenger often and you need that extra seat, then there's no issue here. But if you're like a lot of side-by-side -side owners who rarely, if ever, have a passenger, and that extra seat is just wasted space, the RS1 is clearly the better buy. If it seems like I really, really like the RS1, I do. There's nothing to compare it to from other manufacturers. But if you just look at the fun factor and the wide range of impressive capabilities this vehicle has, it's serious competition for most of the two-seat side-by-sides out there. 
If I really had to put my finger on what makes the RS1 so special and unique, I'd have to say it's that it doesn't require any compromises. From track to trail to fire road to in the rocks, anywhere you're going to want to take your RS1, it can handle it without breaking a sweat. But more importantly, there's just something so peaceful and calming about tackling huge rocks or blasting fast trails inside your helmet, all alone with your thoughts and no one to distract you. That's what throttle therapy is all about. And there aren't many better places to get it than behind the wheel of an RS1. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Textron Off-Road, power, performance, and precision engineering. It only takes two clicks to like and subscribe to our page where you can check out a huge variety of ATV and side-by-side -side videos just like the one you watched.